Okay. Okay. Yeah. So today's date is thirteenth. So is thirteenth a good num? Thirteen a good number or bad number? For some, it's not good. For some, it's not. Yeah, it's not bad. Mm. So uh, you know, I just want to just mention you know this whole thing of superstition, right? So this whole thing of thirteen being a unlucky number is uh, very prevalent, right? Like if you go to hotels, uh, they don't have a thirteenth floor. They don't number it as thirteen, right? Or uh, the room numbers also. They avoid thirteen because they think it's a you know it's a number that does not bring good things. It's unlucky, right? So there are superstitions. So um, so in fact, apparently there is a phobia, which means a fear of number thirteen. Okay, there are people who avoid that. Okay, so maybe uh, we don't have uh, you know fear of number thirteen, or you know we don't consider thirteen as unlucky. But I just want to ask us what what is it that we have superstitions about right we could have cultural superstitions uh, we could have uh, you know even within you know as a believer we could have superstitions right we could have um, you know it need not be like okay black cat cross the road i'm not so uh, i know i'm not going to go there but then uh, we might have religious superstitions you know as believers we might think that okay um, you know i you know, I'm I'm sure that you know I you know that reading the Bible is good. Okay, in fact, we're going to look at that you know, how to study the word. But the fact is that when we don't read and we allow some kind of fear to creep in, okay, so so get it right. Okay, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, it's not that you should not revere the word or not honor God or not walk in faith. I'm not saying that, but when we let's say you miss reading the word. And then we think something bad will happen today. Right? Subconsciously, it's there. Okay, so I just want us to uh, want to address that. You know, like even as believers, we might have superstitions. Even as believers, we might have superstitions which lead to fear. You know? um, like if you if you look at um, one John um, chapter four, I think okay, one John. Um, chapter 4, verse 18. Okay, it talks about fear. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. Okay, and he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So he's talking about, if you read it in context, it's talking about judgment, okay, having boldness in the day of judgment, okay, not, not having, not being fearful what will happen because his love casts out all fear. Okay? So the thing is this, that fear causes torment. Fear brings us to a place of being trapped. Fear does not liberate us. Right? Fear always holds us back. We hold back because of fear. And uh, we're talking about uh, uh, you know, something like a paranoia, an unhealthy fear. Okay? So it does that. Superstition leads to fear. Fear keeps us from doing what we need to do. But the uh, the Bible very clearly states uh, in John chapter I think 16 and verse 13 that the role of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, is to lead us into all truth. Right? John chapter um, 16, and let's um, yeah, uh, when he the spirit of truth. He's called the spirit of truth. John 16 verse 13. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Okay? That's the work. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So when we, when we are guided into truth, truth sets us free, liberates us, liberates us from wrong thinking, liberates us from fear, which is as a as a result of lies or as a result of superstition, whatever it is, you know, the work of the Holy Spirit is to lead us into truth. Truth does not, you know, we sometimes think truth actually, you know, it's very restricting. I'm restricted by truth. You know, I'm not able to live the way I want to live because of truth. But the, actually, the opposite is true. Truth actually liberates us. 
what we think as oh freedom freedom to do everything freedom to you know that actually holds us back that actually limits us from living the life that god wants us to live okay so truth actually liberates us expands our horizon leads us into all that god wants us because the holy where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom right and the holy spirit leads us into the freedom that he has for us right so so let's just pray and say lord whatever is you know whatever whatever fear that i might be having whatever wrong belief whatever superstition that i may be um, you know having lord deliver deliver me from it guide me into all truth right father god we we come before you because you are the spirit of truth and lord we thank you in your presence there is fullness of joy lord where you are there is freedom lord father god we thank you that you came to give us freedom you came to give us life and lord we thank you holy spirit that you lead us progressively into your truth and into lord even more freedom lord free to do the things that you called us to do free to be all that you called us to be lord and lord we we just ask for each one of us that you'll give us that freedom in the spirit today that uh, we will know lord beyond uh, any doubt god that the truth sets us free sets us free from fear sets us free from all kinds of wrong belief and deception and uh, superstition god i pray that if there are if there's anything like that lord let it be dismantled god and enable us to be set free today god we thank you in jesus matchless name we pray amen amen okay so today we are going to look at um, you know uh, studying the word because we've been looking at um, preaching we've been looking at the person qualifications etc and uh, yesterday we uh, you know uh, we looked at uh, yet another interesting topic and how we need to minister the word of god like the content has to be the word of god our reference point has to be the word of god Okay, so today we will look at uh, how we can study the word of god okay what are the different ways by which we can study the word of god um yeah i just want to share the screen just give me a minute um okay Okay, so studying God's word. See, there are um, five, or five basically five broad categories or different ways by which we can study the word of God. Okay, so I just want to ask us, you know, like, uh, how do you study the word of God? Or is there any particular way in which you uh, read the Bible, study the Bible, book by book? Yeah. No, uh, how do you personally? Uh, what is it that you personally use in order to study? Mm. Okay, other translations of a passage, verse, book. Yeah. What is it? Okay. Right, okay. Compared to translations, okay. Mm. Talking about that certain topic. Topic, okay. And then find some resources, listen to some teachings regarding the topic. Mm. Right, right. Anyone else? Okay, so um, so let's look at uh, you know some of the common ways by which we can study. Right, study. We can employ all of these or some of these. Okay, and each one has its own um, uh, strength. Right or uh, merits. So uh, the first one that we can look at is the word study. Okay. So by definition, it means that you take a word in the Bible and uh, what that word means right through Scripture. Okay. Because um, uh, the, the the what we find is because we use our language, right, uh, English or whatever language we might use translations to study the bible but um, and uh, it's good to know what is it in the original language right what it means in the original language like for example the word love okay 
the word love uh, is in the english bible it's translated as love i don't know how is it in hindi throughout that's how it's mentioned context okay uh but um, you know we, we know that it, it has four at least four greek words right which describe love you know what are those agape god kind of love eros physical is phileo right which is uh, phileo and then fourth one storge s t o r g e right storge so we have uh, at least these four kinds of um, greek words which are translated as love okay so god so loved the world right it it is not phileo it is obviously it's agape right um so so like that so when we do a word study so when we look into the original language it actually enhances our understanding of it okay so to do a word study it means that you take that particular word and look into you know where wherever the word occurs in the in the bible right um so of course now we have a lot of tools to help us if you just do a google and say okay where where does it come and all the verses are you know are there so we can do that uh, we can also use words uh, you know uh, tools like esword right msword uh, on your phones you can have on your laptops you can do uh, esword so all this so basically it is a study of the word and uh, we understand what it means um, throughout right like a study of the word in the original language it, it really um, enriches our understanding of it for example if you look at uh, psalm 23 the last verse says surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life okay the psalm is ends like that and that word follow you know when you look at the hebrew um i forget what 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 the hebrew word is but it has the understanding of uh a, a, a lion or an animal going after its prey pursuing right a lion let's say a lion going after a after its meal after a deer okay it just chases it pursues right hunts it down so that's the understanding of that word uh, surely goodness and mercy will follow me now when we read it in in a ling in english or in our own languages we see it okay goodness and mercy is follow me it can keep following me close it can be there somewhere but uh, you know we declare it surely goodness and mercy will follow me but when we have this understanding the psalmist is saying goodness and mercy is not letting go of me right because the lord is my shepherd i am following the shepherd he leads me he makes me lie down you know he's pro he protects he nurtures he lays a table uh, you know in the front of my enemies valley of shadow of death i will not fear anything his rod is you know staff they comfort me and in the light of all that he's saying that surely goodness and mercy will just pursue me just hunting me down because i'm following the shepherd okay so every time we use that we sing that you know your goodness is coming after you know that song you know your goodness is coming after it's like that it's it's scary <laughs> to see a you know lion chase uh, you know if it's chasing you it is scary but it's pursuing the goodness of god pursuing talks about the heart of god right so it really enriches our understanding when we do a study of the word when we do a word study okay um i i i you know using a bible called the spirit fill life bible that has a word study you know that's also very nice i think um, that's a good um, that's how i started uh, getting interested in uh, you know the hebrew and the greek words uh it's called the spiritual life bible and it has you know all these small small uh, wherever the words are it will give a meaning of it understanding of it etc right um so uh, for example the word um, you know cast your cares upon the lord for he cares for you so that has the picture of a camel okay the camel a heavy cam uh, you know carrying a heavy load okay it's, it can carry but after the journey the the one who is the the trainer of the camel or the one who rides the camel like he he gives a command okay he gives a command and in the the hebrew word is galal 
he gives a command. So the camel actually kneels down and just tilts to one side in order to roll over all that weight that it's been carrying onto the ground or whatever, you know, so that it can be unloaded. So that's the picture that we have of casting our cares upon Jesus because he cares for us. Right. So so when we have that, say, you know, Lord, I, I cast my cares on you. It's not like, you know, the Lord is saying, okay, just unburden yourself, just roll out all those worries, all those cares, all those weights, just roll it off your back totally. Right. So we have that picture. So word study really helps us, enhances our understanding of it, enriches and and really gives us an insight into the heart of God. Right. Okay. What's the next one? The next one would be a topical study. Okay. Now, uh, similar to a word study, it is a topic. Like you said, Brins, it's a topic. So you take a topic, a theme, and look at, you know, the, throughout the Bible. Okay. A topic can be like, for example, um, huh? forgiveness. Okay. A topic like forgiveness. So, you know, the entire Bible, what does it speak about forgiveness? Right um, about forgiving, forgiveness from God, forgiveness, um, you know, about forgiving other human beings. You know, what does it talk about forgiveness? So it's a topic, and it's throughout Scripture. Okay. So the thing is that um, uh, you know we can look at Scripture, we can categorize. Okay, Old Testament we see this, New Testament we see this, epistles we so we can actually categorize. You know, we see this in the Psalms, we see this in the prophetic. Uh, scripture, we see this, so we can actually categorize this uh, and then explore the differences, etc. Right? Um, so it can be on various things. Right? I think systematic theology deals with that. It's actually a topical study, right? You deal with different themes. Um, you're doing systematic. Oh, you finished systematic there already. Yeah. So it's about different themes, right? Salvation, uh, resurrection, Holy Spirit, all that. So it's a it's a, a systematic theology is about the entire Bible. What does the entire Bible speak about that? So it gives us a very wholesome picture, right? Okay, I, I'm not just gold, holding on to one thread and saying, hey, this is the entire fabric. No, I'm con considering the Old Testament, the New Testament. I know, okay, in the old dispensation before the cross, this is how it was. In the new dispensation, this is how it is, right? So it's a very... Um, uh, again, it's a very important and uh, very valuable way of studying the word. And uh, one valuable tool is a concordance. Okay, so a concordance. Uh, a concordance is, I think, even in your Bibles, if you turn to the last page, there is some a mini concordance, right? Um, like it gives a word, and where that those uh, words are. Yeah. So it's a word concordance. Some concordances have uh, the theme. Right, so the theme itself. Okay, um, so where these um, the scriptures are, are, you know, does your Bible have a concordance? Right. Okay. So mine does. It, you know, for example, it says fables. Okay, the word fables. Uh, don't give heed to fables, uh, or you know, we did not follow cunningly devised fables. Right. So that fables, uh, it gives two scriptures: First Timothy one verse four. And Second Timothy one verse sixteen. Okay. Um, similarly, uh, so here I think only yeah, old and new. Okay. And uh, the face, you know, I've seen the face of God, Genesis thirty two thirty, and and so on. So we can use concordance uh, quite effectively, right, to study. And uh, see, you know, we want to study something on baptism, right? It is it is there, um, and so on, right? So, so concordance is a valuable uh, resource we can use it um, okay so uh, topical study okay so it's a it's a topic it's a theme and uh, it's it's quite uh, valuable to to get to know the full picture of a particular theme right okay the third one is what we would call a character study okay so character study meaning it's a biography of the person right so uh, taking a character, studying about the character. And this is also very, very valuable. You know, how, in what circumstances did they come into the picture, right? What were the hardships they faced? How did they relate to God? How did they relate to other people? 
what are some strengths that they had what are some deep character flaws that they had okay how can can i relate to that person you know can i identify with that person do i have certain things that they had right so good things bad things everything is is mentioned right in the bible the bible does not hold back okay like for example when we see uh, about the lives of certain people we are shocked right we read about it and wow what is this yeah i'm not like that <laughs> that's your you know uh, we are sometimes disgusted but that's the bible right the bible describes it's not that it's prescribing that behavior now what is the difference it's not endorsing that behavior you know it's not prescribing that you also go do it no but it's is describing it's very descriptive so so certain sections of the bible are very descriptive in nature that doesn't means it that doesn't mean it is prescribing you know or endorsing you know that condoning that behavior right so we see that um now when we do a character study we need to understand that um uh one thing that we need to uh, understand is um or keep in mind is in what dispensation were they living okay meaning you know was it before the cross or was it after the cross it's it's a very important thing because um not everything the way they related to god you know certain things yes uh, you know god spoke god did god lead led them guided them fine but the way the holy spirit ministered then and now is different right we have the abiding indwelling presence of the holy spirit so we need to keep that in mind so not everything can be transferable to our lives we need to understand that while you know it, it's it, it'll be good you study it and then you say okay wow and i learned these things what to do what not to do about their lives it's good for that but then when it comes to applying to uh, you know our daily lives we need to understand that hey the way god dealt to them the way god ministered to them the way god led them is different from how i can be like it says okay this particular king he went to seek the prophet he wanted directions etc now we have the spirit of god living in us the well the prophet can definitely confirm what god has already you know speaking to us what god has already um, you know uh, been leading us into okay so um, so that's something that we need to bear in mind okay so character traits are uh, the timelines what lessons that we can learn etc okay then we come to the fourth one which is the book study okay so book study um you take a book and we go verse by verse just like how we what we are doing in church um, these sundays we are doing study on thessalonians right so we learn the you know the background the context what led to it who's who says what and who's writing it and uh, under what circumstances and all that so um, if you see uh, a book study would involve all the other three right it will have a word study right you ask you that because there are certain words that you need to uh, yeah it will have a topical study because there are certain themes like for example i'm just thinking about 1 corinthians 12 13 and 14 now regarding spiritual gifts brethren i do not want you to be ignorant then paul starts so it's a, it's a theme those three chapters till the end of 14th chapter he's talking about spiritual gifts how it should be what are these gifts etc so uh, so the the whole aspect of topical or thematic study also is there in a book study right character study most definitely right you you learn about like the life of uh, you know and the character of certain people and so on right so it is it is there so which means it's going to um, you know it will be a time of learning it will be a time of unlearning also right i can do all things through christ who strengthens me okay, what is the context tell me what is the context <laughs> where is it who says that paul and it is in philippians right okay so philippians 4 verse 13 i can do all things through christ who strengthens me what is the context sorry what hey, go ahead go ahead ah uh, true yeah but 
but if you look at the verses before that, right? Hmm. Yeah. So he's saying it, it is definitely an overcoming verse. He's saying, you know, through Christ, I can overcome. That is definitely what he's saying. You know, I can I can overcome any of these things. It is through Christ. But what is he saying? He's saying, whatever state I am in, I've learned to be content. Okay. Uh, I know how to be abased, I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, how to abound and to, you know, another saying, saying, you know, these things, this environment doesn't affect me because I can actually overcome. So that's the context. We can, yeah. The thing is, we can. <laughs> we can use it, but when we understand the context, we will use it even in those, yeah, even in those circumstances. Right? Whenever we face those, you know, hey, I, I don't have right now, I'm going through a season, you know, right now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Very rarely do we use it, right? In such con uh, in such when we go through certain uh, you know circumstances like that. So a word study would actually give us the background, will uh, give us the context, right? And uh, and we can uh, well, apply the word in a in a more meaningful way, right? So it's going to take time, yes or no? Yeah. Um, so you know we can. When he's studying books of the Bible, here are some things, okay? Uh, and I'm just going to put that in the chat for the online students. Um, I'll just. Okay, so um, one is uh, make an outline of the book. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, when we read through, we see the themes, okay? And in fact, in our Bibles, um, it is it is one letter, right? It is it is like hello, how are you? Lots of love. It's, it's that's it's one letter, but there are different themes, right? And uh, and the people who have put it together have actually uh, segregated the themes, right? Uh, striving and suffering for Christ. I'm just looking at Philippians, um, you know, humbled and exalted Christ. Philippians two, you know, so it's actually there. So these are different themes. So you make an outline. Look, work, look for keywords or phrases. Okay, so what are some keywords? What are some phrases? Um, for example, if you were looking, um, you know, if we look at First Thessalonians that we were, you know, that we were studying uh, on Sundays, so we can see some certain patterns, right? Um, um, Let me just pick one. Um, oh, I didn't mark it. Let me. Um, okay, uh, if you look at uh, First Thessalonians chapter two, yeah. Okay. So uh, two and verse ten. Okay, so we we see certain things, right? Um, we are witnesses, and God also how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behave. Okay, so he'll use like three attributes over and over again. Okay, how justly, how uh, devoutly, uh, how blamelessly. Okay, and if you look at uh, uh, certain verses following that, also um, you see that he. He uses, you know, these kind of attributes over and over. Um, three attributes. He's, he's talking about faith, hope, love. You know, it became an example, uh, etc. So we, you see certain certain patterns there, certain phrases that he uses, um, and uh, you know, and things like that, right? Um, okay. So look for those. Look for those keywords. Look for those phrases. That also gives an understanding what he's trying to. Reiterate what he's trying to, um, you know, what he's trying to emphasize, right? In the in the letters, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so are you saying like to find the keywords and the phrases that you just see the repeated words? Yeah, it could be repeated words. It could be repeated um, themes that he's emphasizing. See the, the repetitions. Uh, it's a pattern. Like um, when we look into the Psalms, also we see certain things that are repeated, 
and we you know your love endures forever your mercy endures forever um and we know that's part of a song right so this is a refrain that's coming over and over again so these things really you know jump out uh, but when it comes to these words and themes um like verse 19 right what is our ho hope or joy or crown of rejoicing you know so it says uh, i don't know it's 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 something for us to um, look at something for us to study and uh, it could be this these kind of patterns right um, it could be repetition of a word it could be you know these kind of patterns like three words um over and over again right so yeah so these are some things to watch out for um both one look for the main applications okay there is the application okay this is what you need to do and if you're taking one Thessalonians as an example, there are a lot of applications, right? You for Christian living, you know, for application for, you know, if you're a minister, you know, how you need to lead by example, live by example. So that's the you know that's a basic application there. Um, so application is how can I live out this right? This principle, this truth, how can I put it to practice in my life? That's application, right? Okay. Then, uh, of course, we study the background of the book. Uh, when was it written? Uh, why was it written? And so on. When you look at the First Thessalonians, we learned that it was written for, you know, maybe three reasons, right? If you study. One, he's uh, encouraging the believers not to give up, right? Two, he's reminding them of the things that he taught them, right? All the things that he taught in that short period of one month, he's reminding them. Thirdly, He's also, again, encouraging them about uh, the return of the Lord and the hope of life hereafter. Because they were obviously going through persecutions. Maybe a lot of people lost their lives. And he's talking about the reality of, uh, reality of the hereafter when people die in Christ. Right? So, so he's talking about that. Right? So... Yeah, so those are some things that we can um, look at. Um, we uh, uh, some application points, right? Truth applications. Okay. So between this class and next, um, why don't we do a word study? Okay, as an assignment. Um, okay, so you can pick your word. Let me know. Okay, would you like to do it now? So I can just make a note of it. Okay, so we don't want to repeat, right? Uh, same words. So you can let me know. Online students, same thing. Um, what do you want to do a word study on? Okay. Huh? Yeah, if you can tell me now, I'll uh, make a note of it. Or I can just put a Google Doc, you can enter it in. The first person, huh? OK, so one second, one second, let me. <laughs> OK, can somebody make, Anand, you'll make a note of it. OK, OK, so Rinchen is wisdom, uh, Sri Radha, faithfulness, Prince, anointing. Nikhil. I always get confused between Nikhil and Vimal. I was about to say Vimal, then I said, okay, I'll wait. <laughs> Nikhil. Prin, uh, yeah. Francis. What to select? Okay. So give to Anand, right? And uh, let the. Uh, I think Anand is already written. OK, so um, okay, online students, you can post it here. And I'll just copy and paste it on an Excel, uh, on a Google Doc. OK? So yeah, Chira, Prabhu, Anthony, Mercy, Nikhil Mercy. That sounds like a name, Nikhil Mercy. Nikhil Mercy, this is my. Okay, Nikhil Mercy is writing, uh, studying about Nikhil Mercy. Francis? God. Okay, interesting. That's a lot of work. All the best. 
Yeah. Hmm? Nina Grace, is it? Okay. 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 So, um, in person, we are sorted. Uh, online, um, you can actually put it on the chat. Um, uh, uh, what I can also do is I'll I'll make a Google Doc and I'll uh, share it uh, online students. So you can do that. E-learning, um, it's up to you. You can choose a word and do a study on it. Just like how we discussed, you do a word study, right? Uh, what does it mean in the original language? And uh, are there different words in the original language um, that we will look at only one word? What does it mean? How is it used, etc. right? Okay. Okay, Nina's perseverance, right? Thank you. Okay. So, um, okay. so let's move on to the next one, which is um, inductive Bible study. Okay. Now, inductive is uh, it's interesting. Um, okay. So, what does that word mean, inductive? Okay. Um, in logic, right, there are two different words that are normally used deductive, inductive. Okay, so deductive reasoning is general to the specific. And simply put, you know, inductive is we look at one thing, specific thing, uh, you know, why is it there, what is the meaning of it, and then you apply it to a more general sense. Okay, so that's inductive. For example, um, you know, questions like um, we uh, we can we can say okay, inductive Bible study would in uh, would require, um, let's say, three steps. Okay. First one would be observation. Okay. The second one, interpretation. Third one is, uh, you know, application. Right. Simple observation, interpretation, application. Okay. So in the interpretation, even as we observe the text, there are several questions that we may ask. Okay. That you. Uh, that is there listed in the notes, right? So questions like, what does this passage say? Okay, you read a passage, and then you're asking yourself that question, what does this passage say? Okay, what is it saying? Uh, another question, what does this passage mean? Okay, so are both the same or different? What, do, what does it say, this passage? Um, what does it mean? Yeah, so um, there is, it is different. In, in what way is it different? What does it say? What they are conveying. You can probably use the... Can you use the use the mic, please? Yeah, yeah. This. Uh, what they say is like what they are conveying. Mm. And what they mean is like to see what they are trying to teach us through it. Mm. What are yeah? What are the principles? Okay, okay. So let's yeah. That's that's um, basically you know that's thing. Okay, this this parable says. Or this scripture, you know, it just says this, but this is what it actually is uh, truth that is conveying. Uh, for example, okay, um, uh, let's turn to Matthew seven. Okay, Matthew seven. Um, nine onwards. Okay. What man is there among you who, when his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? Okay. So this is what he's saying. So when it comes to, you know, we read, read on, and then he says, If you then, being evil, know how to good, give good gifts to your children, how much more uh, your father who is in heaven will give good things to those who ask him. Right. So these questions... Are in the context of saying that okay, something value, something of value, is is given, not something that is of lesser value or something that is harmful. When you actually ask your father, okay, um, things like uh, 
maybe another another verse that we can look at is um let's say yeah okay uh, I'll, I'll just explain it with another example let's let's look at um Um, just trying to see. <clears throat> um, okay, so so uh, yeah, I think Anand's question was: Is there a hidden meaning in it? <laughs> okay, so um, there's there should there could be one aspect of it. In the sense, um, yeah, I'm just trying to find the scripture to as an example. Um, okay, just give me a minute, one minute. Okay. Okay. Let's let's look at um, the book of John. Okay, John chapter fourteen. Sorry, John chapter four. I'm sorry, John chapter four, verses thirteen and fourteen. Okay, Jesus answered and said to her, "Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again." But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Okay. So when you look at uh, the, what does the passage say? I mean, what does these two verses say? This is what it conveys that Jesus is saying he'll give something, he'll give water, and it's not like the water from the well, but it will spring up into everlasting life. Okay. The literal meaning he's giving something, he's giving another water. Right, but what does he actually mean by that? He's obviously referring to everlasting life. He's uh, referring to salvation, right? Uh, and which, which the physical cannot satisfy. Right? He's talking about the spiritual, um, which uh, you know. If you look at John chapter three, also, <clears throat> unless one is born again, okay. And there he goes on to explain to Nicodemus. The, the previous chapter, right? John chapter 3. It uh, goes on to explain to Nicodemus about how one is born of water and the spirit, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and so on, right? So he goes on to explain that. But certain passages, it, uh, you know, it just left like that, and uh, we know what does, you know, we need to understand in context what does it mean. Okay. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. So, um, and also, when we go through, of course, we are studying and we know that um, we are not just using our intellect alone, but we have God, the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the scriptures with us. Right. So what is God telling us? Even as we read, the Holy Spirit is making these, this logos, he's making it rhema for us. He's quickening it. Right. He's highlighting uh, emphasizing certain truths to our hearts. Okay, so so the question to ask again is, what is God telling me? Okay, some que some other questions here. How am I encouraged and strengthened? Is there sin in my life for which confession and repentance is needed? How can I be changed so I can learn and grow, uh, and so on? You know, uh, how are these pre precepts affecting me? Am I listening to God? So many questions, and you, I'm sure we can add to these questions also. Okay, so what can I? Is there an instruction for me to follow? Is there a sin for me to confess? Um, is there, you know, what is it that I can be an example of, etc.? So, so this is a yeah. Alleg allegory for um, what? Do, what does this passage say, and what does this passage mean? Hmm. So, yeah, so the, in the sense, uh, yeah, there is an allegory. There could be. So, so in that case, uh, when we use this these questions, it, it's helpful for us. 
is it an allegory is it a you know yeah maybe some uh, like figures of speech like um, you know first take out the log out of your own eye and then you'll be just able to speak you know look at the speck in the other person's eye so yeah of, of course it's not literal so things like that we can yeah right the scripture also comes yeah um yeah so he's actually yeah referring to he's he's using natural uh, he's talking about natural uh, elements water fountain etc but he's referring to uh, a deeper truth yeah so it's not a parable in that sense it's not a story um because a parable would be a earthly story but yes uh, he's he's referring to he's drawing a parallel between the spiritual and the natural yeah yeah um same we see in um, i think john chapter 6 also right when he talks about the holy spirit and there of course john clearly explains this he says about the holy spirit when he says um or oh, sorry john, john chapter 7 i think no john chapter 7 verse 38 he who believes in me as scripture said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water okay so it's a it, it's symbolic of the work of the holy spirit flows out like a river because and john explains that this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive right one of the difficult thing is maybe if we read english bible and all we can understand okay. in this regional language there will be so much different meaning it oh, is it okay some scriptures okay uh, hmm mm mm-hmm. uh, i saw a few people is interpreting in a very different way because of that uh, uh, language mm, mm-hmm. the how they translate it i see yeah. maybe if you um, if you can think of something we can actually discuss it you can just you know and how it is in the regional language you can let us know mm yeah yeah it's like uh, mm-hmm. he heard the sound mm-hmm. and in other in other passages it's it's like uh, he didn't heard the, uh, the people who are people yeah, yeah. they they could not hear yeah. correct mm. but the thing is I, i i was doing a research on it then in this N- nkjv also it same he, they didn't uh, they heard okay and this nav when we go to nav the sound of uh, when it came that they sensed it's it's clearly in an eye yeah yeah so um so the thing is they heard uh, they heard a noise yeah so it, it it did not make sense it, it was not in some terms of words and sentences but they heard something yeah yeah paul's encounter <laughs> Okay, you make a note of it. We can look at it, right? So I think it's yeah. Acts towards the. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, twenty-two. Chapter nine. Hmm. So it makes sense. There's no contradiction there. It uh, it's it makes sense. Yeah. okay oh i see okay they are the yeah they couldn't hear articulate words hmm okay okay we'll study about the telugu thing next uh, telugu translation okay so um, thank you so much we'll stop here okay God bless bye bye